In today's video, we're going back in time to discuss how Jordan and the Chicago Bulls dominated the 90s. But before we start, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Now, without further ado, let's get started. During the 1989-90 season, the Chicago Bulls had a lineup of John Paxson, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, and their center, Bill Cartwright. Jordan was around 27 years old, which meant he was in his prime, and his numbers sure showed it. He averaged 33 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2.8 steals per game, while shooting 52% from the field and 37% from three. His partner in crime, Scottie Pippen, averaged 16 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists, while also averaging 2.6 steals per game. Game. So yeah, they had two players that were averaging over two steals per game, which is almost unheard of in today's NBA. But that just showed how great of defenders they were. They went on to finish 55 and 27, which ranked them third in the Eastern Conference. In the playoffs, they matched up against the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round. Unsurprisingly, Jordan absolutely obliterated them, averaging 36 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, and two and a half steals in the series, ending in just four games. In the second round, they faced off against the 76ers, and well, Jordan dominated them even harder than he did Milwaukee, averaging 43 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists, and 4 steals in the series. Jordan even had three 40-point games. And not to forget about Pippen, he averaged 20 points and 6 assists while having 1.5 steals and nearly 2 blocks per game. They defeated the 76ers in 5 games and were now off to face the Detroit Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals. This is where their great playoff run would end, unfortunately. And they were defeated in 7 games, even though Jordan averaged 32 two points during the series. Next season, they would be out for revenge, and we're looking to have another great season in playoff run. And that they did. In the 1990-91 season, they finished 61-21, which placed them first in the conference. Jordan averaged 31 points, 5 assists, and 2.7 steals per game this season and was now looking forward to playing the New York Knicks in the first round. Jordan averaged 29 points this series, and Pippen averaged 19 points along with 3.3 steals and a block, which helped them sweep the Knicks in three games. In the second round, they played the 76ers, and with Mike and Pippen both having great scoring performances, they beat the 76ers in five games. Now, they were back in the Eastern Conference Finals, and their opponents were none other than the Detroit Pistons once again. But this time, it was a totally different result, and the Pistons were swept with Jordan averaging 29, 5, and 7. The Bulls had made it to the NBA Finals and were going up against the Los Angeles Lakers. This is where Jordan would win his first NBA championship, defeating the Lakers in five games while also being crowned Finals MVP. In the 1991-92 season, they finished with an amazing 67-15 record, proving they were the best of the best. Honestly, no one could argue that because the Bulls were back in the finals for their second straight year, facing off against the Trailblazers. Jordan averaged 35 points and 6.6 .6 assists, while Scotty chipped in 20 points and 7.7 .7 assists. These two great all-around performances led the Bulls to winning their second championship in a row, with Jordan winning finals MVP yet again. In the 92-93 season, the Bulls had a 57-25 record, and they were on fire coming into the season, winning two back-to-back -back rings. In the first round, they faced off against the Hawks, and because of MJ averaging 34, 6, and 4, they swept them and did the same exact thing the second round when going against the Cavaliers. Now they were in the Eastern Conference Finals, and the Knicks were looking to go to the Finals. But Mike had other plans, beating them in six games, even scoring 54 in Game 4. The Bulls were now in the finals for the third year in a row and were matched up against the Phoenix Suns. Jordan completely tore them apart, averaging 43 points and six assists while shooting 40% from three on four attempts per game. They won the series four to two, and just like that, Jordan had his third ring and the Bulls just pulled off an historic three-peat. Soon after the title, something terrible would happen. Michael Jordan, at just 30 years old, retired from the NBA after the murder of his father, James. This horrific event shook the entire basketball world, because not only did MJ just win his third ring, but he was the best player in the NBA and arguably the most famous athlete on the planet. His retirement came in the middle of his prime. So now the Bulls were without their star for the 93-94 season, and fans were eager to see how they would perform. Unexpectedly, the Bulls were still one of the best teams in the NBA, led by Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, and B.J. Armstrong, who were all All-Stars that year. Pippen averaged 22 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 steals, while Armstrong averaged 14 points and 4 assists. Horace Grant averaged 15 points and 11 rebounds, along with 4 assists per game. Those kind of contributions led the 94 Bulls to a 55-27 record. In the playoffs, the Jordanless Bulls played against the Cavaliers, and they ended up sweeping them in a few games, with Pippen averaging 25 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 .3 steals for the series. In the second round, they had to get past the 
New York Knicks, and it wasn't looking good for Pippen and his Bulls because they were down 0-2 to start the series. The Bulls fought hard and won the next two games, but even after a great effort, Patrick Ewing and the Knicks came out on top after beating the Bulls in seven games. Yeah, they didn't bring home the trophy for a four-peat, but they definitely overachieved and barely missed a step without their superstar. Now to start the next 94-95 season, Chicago had a lineup of B.J. Armstrong, Ron Harper, Pippen, Corey Blunt, and Will Perdue, with Jordan still being retired and pursuing a baseball career. They started off the season shaky with an 11-9 record in their first 20 games and would go 9-11 in their next 20. It was obvious they were missing Michael, but to the Bulls' relief, he would return on March 19th towards the end of the season. Although they lost to the Pacers in his debut, the Bulls went on to win 24 of their last 34 games, with them being 13 and four with Jordan in the lineup and finishing the season 47 and 35 as the fifth seed in the conference. They now had the Hornets in the first round and Jordan did what he had always done, dominate. In this series, Jordan averaged 32 points, six boards, and five assists while shooting a scorching hot 48% from three on four attempts per game. He even scored 48 points in game one. The Bulls defeated the Hornets in four games and were now up against Shaquille O'Neal and the Magic in the second round. The series started 2-1 in favor of the Magic, but the Bulls would win game four and it would be their last win of the series. Shaq and Orlando defeated Jordan in six games. That was Jordan's first year back from retirement, so many cut him and the team some slack. But next season is where history would be made and remembered forever. In the 95-96 season, they now had a roster of Steve Kerr, MJ, Pippett, Dennis Rodman, and Luke Longley. They started off the season on fire, having an 18-2 record in their first 20 games and then soon went on a ridiculous 18-game winning streak. They then finished the season with the greatest record ever at the time, 72-10. They were completely unstoppable. And when you break down their roster, it's obvious why. They had Steve Kerr as their point guard, a three-point specialist. Then they had MJ, the greatest player ever, Scottie Pippen, the greatest defender ever, and Dennis Rodman as one of the greatest rebounders and defenders of all time. They dominated every aspect of the game, scoring, passing, and defending on a nightly basis. The domination would continue all through the playoffs, and they would go 11-1 up to the finals. They were going up against the Seattle Supersonics in the finals, who had Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, and Hersey Hawkins on their roster. Despite the great players Seattle had, they were down 0-3 and were one game away from a sweep. After a 25-point performance from Sean Kemp, the Sonics were still alive and would win the next game as well, sending it to a game six. Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman's combined effort would put the Sonics out and the Bulls would win another championship, Jordan's fourth. Jordan was getting older heading into the 96-97 season, but he was still at the top of his game, averaging nearly 30 points per game and led the Bulls to a 69-13 record. MJ eventually led them to yet another NBA Finals against the Utah Jazz. They came away with a victory in Game 1, 84-82, with Jordan and Pippen combining for 58 points. Game 2 wasn't that close, and the Bulls pulled off a 97-85 victory with Jordan scoring 38 points and dishing out 9 assists. The Jazz would win Game 3 with Carl Malone breaking out with 37 points, now making the series 2-1. They would tie the series after Malone and John Stockton started upping their play, but MJ would score 38 and 39 points in the next two games, slamming the door on the Jazz and securing his fifth NBA title and another Finals MVP. The 97-98 season was more of the same. Jordan and the Bulls dominated everyone and finished the year off with a solid 62-20 record, with Mike averaging over 27 points per game. Of course, they dominated in the playoffs yet again, even though the Indiana Pacers gave them a run for their money in the Eastern Conference Finals. Nonetheless, they were back in the Finals and faced the Jazz once again and beat them in six games, which gave Jordan his sixth and final NBA championship. After this year, Jordan would retire for the second time, wrapping up the Bulls' incredible 90s run, which stands as one of the greatest dynasties in sports history. Did you enjoy the video? If so, hit the like button and subscribe to NBA Swish for more amazing NBA content just like this. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one.